Hi, my friend. How are you? This is Pat Sloan. You are here from my fireside chat, which is the longer version of my daily video. So we still have a challenge uh, for today. And I usually post that on Facebook uh, earlier in the day. And then here now in the evening, we sit and have a little bit longer chat. So the calendar for today, uh, which is, we got switched things around, but it is open season. It <laughs> So the challenge is to show me, tell me about your favorite tool. So it's an easy one. So that way there's nothing, not much you have to do is there. You could just leave me a comment here below at the video. What is your favorite tool? Uh, during the day, I've seen a whole lot of super cool favorite tools uh, being shown. I mean, a wide variety, which, which I found interesting. You know, a few of them, I was like, oh, well, you know, now I want to know more about why that is that favorite tool for somebody. So <laughs> I thought I would just tell you what my favorite, you know, it is hard. I think a favorite tool is hard because a little bit of it is like, well, when are you using it? And what's really a tool for those of you who are very detail oriented? I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, what does she mean by tool? What exactly is a tool? Uh, to me, a tool is uh, like a, something that helps you you know, not like the sewing machine. I don't think about the sewing machine as a tool. I think about some other item that helps you with your quilting. Uh, so that would be a tool to me. So I thought I would pull out. So I decided today, <laughs> today my favorite tool, tools. I'm going to show you th three. So I think the Wonder Clips are one of my all time favorite tools. Of course, I have a whole pile of, whoops, can't pick them up, whole pile of red ones here. Now, I want to show you why I think they're one of my favorite tools. So, can you see how they are flat on the bottom and then curved on the top so that a lot of the board, so they're not like symmetrical. And that is really wonderful engineering because it is more useful to us to have this flat on the bottom because if you're putting it on binding, then you can uh, have, you know, the flat part will be what is running along flat on your machine while you're like, or, or, or on your lap or whatever. So you don't, um, or if you're just clipping this to sew, you don't have that lump. You don't have the whole thing lumpy. It's got a flat bottom on it. And I like that they're color co coded because there might be times when you're doing something where you need color coded. They come in a couple sizes. I have some little skinny ones. I haven't really found a use for those yet, but I'd I think there's a bigger size than, than this is like the standard size. So I think there's a bigger size. I'd like to get those and try them because I've been like to clip the bundle of binding, like uh, the loop of binding. I need a bigger one. I have like a big loop of binding. Okay, my other uh, favorite friend, <laughs> my favorite tool is of course Jack. Jack the seam ripper and the clover one is my is my favorite, these white clover. I think they're they're inexpensive so that if they they do dull, you know, if you are using them a lot, they will dull and they're not expensive, so you can just get a new one. But I like that this one also is ergonomic. Uh, Clover, who, who made the Wonder Clips, they're very ergonomic oriented. So this one is slender and then wide here. So it has a nice uh, feel and it then it goes up so, and it has a gripper so that when you're holding it, you can get on the gripper there and your hand's not going to slip. So I like that. There is a sister to it. <laughs> its sister is the uh, stiletto. And the, the stiletto is the pointy thing. And I use that for uh, like when I'm doing binding to pull it over because I'm doing binding by machine and I pull it to keep it tight as I'm going. A lot of people use this for their patchwork to keep it straight because as you're sewing patchwork and you go through the machine, it is easy for everything to start to sort of slide a little bit. And this helps you keep it there and you don't because you do not want your finger down by the needle. Some of you know why right? Am I right? You know why you do not want your finger down there because your finger can slide underneath and that is a big owie. I do want to show you, um, I have two beautiful, beautiful seam rippers and I don't, I have to find the other one. I think it's in my teaching case. I'm not sure where it is or it might be in the, the drawer down here. Is it in the drawer down here? Ah, it is. I'll show it to you. Okay. These are made by my friend's husband. He does them as a hobby periodically, not very often, but you will see them out and about when you're 
um, in, on your travels. But they are gorgeous. This particular one comes with a, you can wear it as a necklace, you know, so you can wear it while you're working. If you, if you feel you're going to need it that much. <laughs> I wore it while I was teaching sometimes. Um, but it has, the seam ripper comes out the end and goes in here and it's nice and sturdy and it's also ergonomic. And then this end could take the, the, the chain off just in case you don't want that. And then I also bought the one without the chain uh, that has like a, a clip, you know, like I can clip it on to the inside the bag somewhere. And that's also, you know, comes like this and is a little bit different ergonomics on this one. So those are my two pretty uh, tools. Yes, I like them. And if you, you know, you can go out on Etsy and there'll be sellers with uh, seam rippers. So you just go out and just search seam ripper and you'll probably see those because they're, they're pretty easy to find. All the attachment parts of it are like a kit thing people can buy and then they buy the acrylic and they um, put it on their lathe and, uh, you know, form it. So put them together then. Really pretty. So I have um, a fun thing that I was sent as a present, and so I thought I wanted to show it to you because it is so nifty. Um, this in, the, in our evening fireside chat. Let me just first before I do this. Um, first, if you're here and you haven't subscribed yet, right below at YouTube, subscribe, and then after you subscribe, you'll get the bell. You hit the bell, and if you are on an Apple product and you're not on the app, get on the app because that'll show it to you. Um, so subscribe so you always get the new releases when you know when you know so when the video comes out but the fireside chats are uh, when I run them at 8 30 p.m. Eastern time on Monday night I run them in what's called a premiere so that way hi I can chat with you in the side so that's what's really fun is there's usually hundreds of us here when it runs premiere and we talk before it comes on for you know like 15 20 minutes uh, some of you come on 30 minutes ahead of time. I see you on there. <laughs> I'm usually like trying to clean up dinner by then. <laughs> uh, but you can chat with everybody and, and there's a ni really super nice community that comes here and watches it uh, together for the first time. Um, but then afterwards you can watch it. So <sighs> I had a really nice present sent to me by Jerry. So a pretty card. But this is amazing. Look at this project bag. Is this not the cutest thing ever? And look at the fabric. It is quilt blocks and she's quilted around it so nicely. So let me, uh, let me show you this. I just thought you'd like to see it because it is a, um, oh, she told me the name of it. I'll, I'll be, give you a link to it again. It's called the Sew Together Bag. Uh, which is um, a pattern that you can make. So you can make one of these yourself. It has zippers. So here she put this super cute little spool on here. And she was so sweet to send both Greg and I a candy bar. Yum. We've already eaten the one, Jerry. <laughs> so here is, here is how it works. So it opens up super nice so that you can put in, she's got a little pin cushion and a needle holder. But then each of these, like you could put some small projects in here, handwork, whatever, and then each of these opens. And look at the darling fabric she found to put in here. It's all sewing fabrics. So it's got several of these and it's all this sort of accordion style. And then when you zip it up, it's really nice and tidy. And the zipper itself, that is the zipper. Look at that. So the zipper, it comes around and loops and is the handles. So I just think it's uh, fabulous. And I have never made one myself. And so I am, I can tell you, I am just thrilled to be given one as a gift because I don't know when I would make one for myself. So this is really nice. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, thank you. It is going in my sewing bag so I can take it along with me when I go uh, sewing with my friends. And that's always a fun thing to do. The next, the next time that we can get together, which I don't know, we might have to have a virtual sewing, a virtual sew-in. We might have to all get in our Facebook group and um, do videos. Uh, maybe we'll do a Facebook Live. I'm not sure I could get them to come on a Facebook Live, but I know a few of them would do it. If you're watching, that'd be you, Monica. That's 
Monica would do it. <laughs> so on uh, this is Monday, on Sunday, was that yesterday? Yes. <laughs> this feels like a long time ago for some reason. Yesterday, uh, we did a quarantine along project, which is up on my wall here. That is these big rectangles. They are a pattern by my friend Gudrun of GE Designs, and she hosted this sew along, a quarantine sew along, so that you have like a quilt. Uh, it was just a fun, it was a fun worldwide thing. She did some videos at her, you can see them at her YouTube or her uh, Facebook page. But what I did, she's the inventor of the stripology ruler. For those of you who have seen a stripology ruler, and I'll link you to that uh, down below. But if you've uh, never seen one, it's a slotted ruler, but she has like a whole system for uh, different patterns. You can just cut it as slots, like cut strips. But she has books about how to do patterns. And like she showed us cutting this diagonal and how to cut the longer strips. So it was some really good tips because they're very well thought out rulers. She's quite a good uh, designer. Uh, does um, all patchwork designs with things that are, you know, sometimes look more complicated than they are. So what I did is I decided to cut, uh, there's left and right, so I don't know which way that, which way you would call that, but there's A and B, let's put it that way. There's A and B blocks, that's what she calls them anyway. And so uh, one, all the, the dashes go that way and the other one, the dashes go the other way. So I have two stacks. Here's one stack ready and then I cut the other stack because while I was in the groove of understanding the ruler for this, I needed to cut everything. Did I do it all perfectly? No, 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 no. The very first one that a group, I did three, cut them all the wrong way, folded them the wrong way, so they were all too short to do the rectangle. There are some <clears throat> squares or short rectangles to spacers because it's an alternating design. And I'll link you to her page with this. It is, might be still free today, so you wanna go grab it if it is, the pattern. Um, but I'll keep the ones I cut wrong. And then another one where I needed to do the cross cut, I forgot and I was cutting something else. And so I messed up another group, but that's okay. I had enough extra fat quarters in the bundle that I had enough to do everything, you know, do enough blocks for the lap size. So that's what this one will be. My goal, my personal goal, and if you haven't started this yet and you want to, to sort of have this uh, while we're quarantined, <laughs> <laughs> have a project that we show and that you finish uh, just sort of during this time span. That's my goal is to have this finish during the time span, which means I will quilt it and bind it uh, as a as a lap quilt. Um, so I'll probably just do the wave, my, my little wave stitch, or I might just do some sort of bigger wave. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. When I get there, I'll get there. But I need, I have these all stacked now so that I can just so the in-betweens as I can, like I'm doing something else, then I could take a little break, maybe sew a couple of those. Also on the design wall, the design wall is an explosion of stuff for quilt day, which was Saturday. Yes, quilting all the time. I was got my stars up there on the wall to audition and I put some sashing. I know I need to do, I think it's four with primarily blue in the middle. So I'm alternating sort of like blue, red, blue, red. I don't know if you can see from here, but uh, some of this, here, I'll put them up at the top. Some of the stars have more red in the middle and then some have more blue in the middle. So I found out that it looked nice alternating them. And then I will put uh, two and a half inch sashing. Uh, that's, those stars are also a free block pattern. So I'll link you to that. But I put two and a half inch sashing, but what I can't decide is I'm pretty sure it needs to be scrappy or it needs to be just really light. I don't want all the same fabric. I think it's, um, and I don't want dark sashing. I don't want to block them off. I want the stars to kind of float and then I'll do black cornerstones between because I tried some other colors and really the black looks best, pulls the black dot out. Um, and those might, those will be scrappy probably unless... I do them all with a small dot. There's a big dot and a small dot, and I think I'd have enough of the small dot. I could do all the cornerstones that way. Um, so that is those stars and why, and they're all up there. You know, they're waiting their turn now. I just kind of took some pictures so I know what it looked like, and I'll probably end up um, 
maybe getting the stuff out to do the other four, I think it's four or five blocks, and then get that ready like on the side here so that I can do it as I'm doing other things. So now I have two projects to finish up while I'm doing other things. I have a lot more, but this would be just two that are, are on, on the top surface of everything. As you can see back there, my back table. Can you see my back table? It is stacked, stacked with stuff you can't see. <laughs> Someday you can see it, but not today. <laughs> also, on the wall is Big Bird. So how's Big Bird doing? He's looking pretty good. What I have, can you see? I'm going to scoot you forward just a little bit. Can you see that I put two borders on the side? And what I will do is another border in yellow cornerstones uh, on... I put a top and the bottom, I'll put yellow borders and then another cornerstone. And then I'm going to decide whether it needs a third row. So if you have an opinion on this, if you think Big Bird needs a third row, I am willing to do it. I, I kind of think he might look, he's very large. So I'm thinking a kind of wide um, border might look really good on him. So I'm heavily contemplating. <laughs> we quilters have such uh, heavy topics to think about, don't we? Like, should Big Bird have three borders or one or two? What is it? What is the verdict? So I'm thinking three, but let me know what your thought is on that. Because it's important. It's important. Today, Monday, I was invited to be with my friends um, book tour she did a sort of a slow book tour uh, Christine and she was one of the designers for the splendid sampler so if you did the splendid sampler she does a lot of embroidery and for our splendid sampler she did an embroidery that was an X that each unit of the X was a different embroidery stitch it's just gorgeous so she uh, she has a new book this is her book Perfectly pretty patchwork. She loves really soft colors. Um, and so I decided to do my, uh, do something from the book, just a, a partial. One of the interesting things what she did about the book is she did every project, every sort of block was done in more than one project and often in more than one size. So what I did, let me first show you the picture and then I'll show you mine. If you didn't see my blog post yet, whoop. So she has this, this Irish chain, she calls it. This is the most clever, effective block I have ever seen. It is so cool to put together. Uh, she has it in two sizes. So the size that I did was the bigger size and I made a little table mat. Yes, I think it's so darling. And I used my Bonnie Lane fabric, I used all the blues. Um, I really like the soft look of that pink one that she has. So I thought oh, I'd get that same effect with the blue from, from Bonnie Lane. And then if you look at the blog post, I put it on top of my featherweight, my, under my featherweight. And I thought, oh, that's sort of pretty. So I'm not sure if I'll leave it there or, or not. But then she, what she did is each project, then she made a smaller size of these, which is, uh, she made it into a pillow. But this block, this quilt is an excellent scrap buster. Excellent. You can make each one of these blocks out of different fabric. And, and the block is super easy. Don't be fooled. It is super, super easy. But she also has other things like, um, let me just find one. This was the, my other favorite one, which, what does she call it? Mill and Stars. I've always loved this block. And she did uh, two sizes. So she had the, here, can you see? She has the outside. Uh, as the bigger size and then the inside is the little one. And then she made pin cushions out of the smaller one, which are boxy pin cushions. So like if you have ever wanted to make boxy pin cushions like this, uh, she's got a super tutorial in here. And there's plus there's tons of other projects and they're all just, uh, just really, really nice. The book is, I found it 20% off right now. So I'll link you over there. So if you want to pick it up, this one, I definitely, I definitely want to do a scrap. I want to do one with, um, you know, look at my scraps and see, you know, do I, I really like her pink one. Um, and I have a lot strong, some stronger pinks than hers. Hers are very soft. I thought, wouldn't that be cool? Um, make it all in pink. You can make it in purple, 
yellow, red, of course, red, everything red, 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 everything red. <laughs> Any sort of toasty, wouldn't it be pretty in fall? You could do it in fall colors like browns and uh, hunter greens and a tan background, like a nice soft tan background. It'd be a really nice man's quilt uh, to do that. Super scrap buster. So that is perfectly pretty patchwork and I will I will show you where to get that on sale. Now the other thing that I did, or well, we did this week, we had our Wednesday childhood games. So there we go. This one I loved making. This was so I love this bunny fabric. Just so cute. Um, and you might see occasionally blocks that I've used before because I've done you know, like 10 years of sew alongs. Uh, and, and so I have tons and tons of block patterns. So occasionally I'll repurpose and bring one in again for another sampler because why not? Every, every a star, a star, a star, you know, you're always going to see stars. And that's, a. the layout will still be a few more weeks before I can have time to uh, work with that and get it all written up and edited and all that. So it'll be in April that I'll work on it. So I would say probably towards the end of April for the layout for the childhood games, which is a little longer than I usually like to do it. But that's the way, that's the way it is right now. Okay. I, well, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about our journals. There's two different kinds of journals for those of you who are playing around with journaling, you know, the keeping track of your projects. But I thought, you know, right now with so much going on where we are, uh, you know, we're at home, we're at home. And those of you who have critical jobs, essential jobs that are not home, we thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you to death for doing that, for being out there. There's lots of people still working. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a hard job right now. So these, these, this, um, what's it called? The scrappy project planner. This is perfect for keeping track of your week of putting down. What did you actually accomplish? Because when we write down what we accomplished and you go back and look at this, it will be like crazy. Wow. You'll be like, holy cows, particularly for those of you who are really um, at home right now who are not working like you so that you have a lot more time than you usually do at home it'll help you keep focused so that you don't feel like you're just wasting your time or you don't feel like you're spinning your wheels you can put down like what you want to work on on the calendar you know track it like okay I'd like to work on this one today you know like we've talked about this you know on Wednesday put your do the Wednesday block you know on the first, you'll do the block that comes out on the first. Um, you know, if you're trying to finish something for a wedding gift or a birthday gift, you know, track out which days and get this down here. But also, you might just want to use it to make a few notes about what's happening in your world. Um, you might put your thoughts down. You might even start your own journal because I find that journaling, like just writing down what's going on and what, you know, our minds can spin. Our minds can, whew, they are just like a hamster wheel. You know, they are like going around like this sometimes, aren't they? And if you take a few minutes, um, maybe at the end of your day or maybe at the beginning of your day, just to write down your thoughts, uh, write down what's bothering you uh, so that you sort of get it out. That's what I find. If I, I'm journaling and I get it out onto the paper, onto the computer, I do it on the computer. And that way um, I don't have to try to remember about it. I, I've already, I've written it down. So my brain can say, okay, I've written it down. I don't need to think about it or remember it anymore. Um, it's, it's effective for me. So if you're having uh, that sort of, you might try, might try that. I'm also being very good about doing my yoga. I'm finding that very relaxing as yoga with Adrian. I'll link you down there. So if you are interested in doing yoga at home, um, and there's like a lot of hers are like 15 minutes. You can, she has a whole segment on just 15 minute ones. So you could try those and you just do as much as you can. Uh, of it, the, you know, it's, and your flexibility will increase amazingly. I'm surprised how much more flexible I am since I've been doing this since the middle of January. So that's just some helpful, 
helpful things, things you might find helpful, because um, I'm finding them helpful. You know, so. And then for those of you who are making masks, uh, over at the medical masks, uh, for the call has gone out from establishments all around, and the best thing to do is call your local facility, um, whether it's a nursing home, a pediatrics, a hospital, a doctor's office, um, you know, anywhere that you think uh, they might need masks, call and ask them first if they need them, if they can use ones that you were able to make with regular cotton, uh, and then uh, if you're over, then you could just, you know, you could just Google masks. There's a bunch of different styles out there. But if you're in my Facebook group, the very first post, and in the file section, always look in the file section, there is a, uh, some articles to read and also some links to um, patterns. I have two friends that recently put out patterns um, with quite extensive details and options because it's hard to find elastic, so stretchy knit is good to make ties. Uh, so, you know, be informed and then go forth and sew. Uh, and figure out how to get them delivered. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, there's things you can do there. Uh, and we can be uh, very helpful to the community right now, but find out first before you start so that you know that you have a place to, to take them. Uh, and they will wash them because they're not going to use them right from you. They're going to sterilize them and then determine, you know, how they work. So you could do it. Yeah, it's... Uh, just get informed first so as you know what's going on. All right, I've got two more things. You know this, I, I got in this fabric, you know this scarf, that scar, one other scarf I have that's got like the sashiko stitching? I saw this fabric and it is a sash, it's called a sashiko fabric. And this one actually has the stitching. And it is a sort of heavier linen, can you tell? Like, it's almost like a towel linen, you know, like a toweling stuff. And they also have it in solids. So I got these in. I'll link you to them. But I got them in because what I want to do is take one out and I want to wash it. Because two things. I want to see first about making a scarf with it. And then second is I might make some uh, towel, uh, napkins, you know, like evergreen napkins for us to use so that we can just have a napkin and wash it rather than the paper towels. I've been wanting to do that. Greg's mom, my mother-in-law, Madge, uh, she always used cloth napkins. That was, we may have had a paper plate, but we had a cloth napkin. <laughs> she loved cloth napkins. And Unfortunately, I didn't take any of them when we left. You know, they, she hadn't had any new ones for a long time, so they were all kind of, you know, they weren't special. But I thought, I want to make some cloth napkins, but I didn't want to really use just regular cotton. I can. I might, I'll, make some, I'll make some like that. She did. She made them like that. She, was, she is a seamstress and a quilter. But I thought these were kind of neat. They were a little bit heavier. Um, and, of course, the ones here with the sashiko on it, look at that. That's actually, you know, woven. The fabric is woven with those um, that thread through it. So those are pretty cool. I want to play around with them. So these are fabrics I got into to mess around with. So I will keep you. I will keep you updated. Okay. So I have a goodie bag for somebody, and then we'll do another one for for this week. Yeah, because it's March, it's, you know, the whole month, it's March. We have to have, uh, <laughs> have to have a good goodie bag. And also, speaking of that, I'll link it here, but I have a give giveaway from Quilt Day um, that you can still enter. So there's the Ulfa mat and the, um, and a box of Orifil thread. Uh, one, to, one to one person, oh, for a folding mat to one person, and there'll be a thread to another person. So I will link you back up to that because I don't want you to miss out on that from Quilt Day. So this, this one here from last week will go to Drumroll. It's got the pretty fabric. Drumroll is going to Claudia. Okay, it's Claudia McCartney who said... 
my dream, this is all about vacation. I said, what would your dream vacation be? You know, your, your quilty vacation. You know, if you were going to, have to plan a quilty vacation, what would it be? Hers is my dream vacation is with my sister who has quilted for years. She lives in West Virginia and uh, Claudia lives in Georgia. We try to get together once a year somewhere where there are ample quilt shops. Yes, you know, within a, a radius. And then they bring their featherweights and set up in a hotel room and they sew in the morning, they shop in the afternoon, then they sew some more in the evening and they enjoy their time together. So I just, um, I just think that is just so often awesome. She says, it's just the best sister time. You know, I don't have a sister. I have brothers. Uh, so I just think sisters, uh, are such a unique bond, an awesome bond to have. Uh, so Claudia, I will email you. Now, this week, I have a little goodie bag. Whoop, let me get this. So, I still have journals left. So, it's so exciting. So, this week, I have a journal. One of the, the journals to give away, which is, these are so nice. They, you, you know, document a pattern or a, a quilt that you're making and get it all in there. But I have this little um, starter kit. So it is this, There's a, you don't have to make the pattern, but there's the pattern and this bundle of adventure fabric. So these are fat quarters, no fat eights. These are fat eights. And if you take this and add, buy a background or use a background, you own this and the pattern. You can make this super cute banana leaves. I just love that. I don't know why I love that. I think the banana leaves are so cute. And the fabric is nice and sort of summery. It'd be a great little summer throw. It's 40 by 50. So a little summer throw for your, for your living room. And then I thought it would be fun to toss in some buttons that are go with it. So see, got some of these really nice orange buttons by, uh, they're, it's called the Juicy Fruit Package from Just Another Button Company. See a spool, get it out of here. A spool of Orifil thread if you've never tried it. Uh, the Ofa Cutter, which these are so awesome. And then the pin, the little rotary cutter pin. I still have these, so they'll, they gave me quite a nice handful, quite a big handful of these. So, so what are we going to do this week? Ah, what are we going to? What is the question you need to answer? So this week it is. Um, I want to know what quilt has been the most fun for you to make. So what was fun? Uh, you know, did you do a round robin and that was really fun? Did you do a really fast and simple quilt that was a lot of fun? Um, maybe you did something that uh, was like a community builder or like a family project and that would have been fun. Maybe you had a, a wedding quilt that everybody did signatures on or, or a going away quilt for a coworker and everybody signed it or maybe people got together and cut it. Uh, maybe you... Um, find it really fun to work on charity projects with other people. So tell me about the quilt that you've done that's the most fun. And that's at my website. So links down below. So go over to my website and and there we go. That is it. So I appreciate uh, all of you being here. Remember to use my links. Um, I'll put my Amazon shopping link. So if you're purchasing non-quilting things and you use my link, I still get credit for those. I get credit for anything that you're doing. So that helps our small family business. Right now it's kind of crazy. So it helps. Every little bit helps. <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. The video will be back on for the challenge for in the morning. And if you're not on my Facebook group, come on over. Quit along with Pat Sloan. Greg and I thank you so much. We love you. Thank you for being part of our amazing quilting community. Have a great night.